And we're all having a bit of an education, I think, in uh, how to uh, live our lives in this new strange era of lockdown. And I had to carry on not just our personal lives, but our work lives. And uh, the arrival of so much technology in recent years has really been a game changer. So how do you carry out meetings from home, whether with the family uh, or with I mean, your friends or whether with uh, the uh, the office, just as the Cabinet has done with Zoom meetings of the entire Cabinet? Well, let's talk to tech expert Guy Cocker, who joins us now. Good morning to you. Morning, Julie. Um, I have to say, there's an awful lot of tech that I've just been introduced to in the last couple of weeks. I had no idea it even existed. In particular, Zoom uh, has been something which has uh, taken the world by storm, it would seem. And it's how the Cabinet are having their meetings with all those different people present, everyone able to see each other on the screen. Um, tell us how that works and how do people get it? Yeah, well, I think the interesting thing about Zoom is that it, it allows up to a 1,000 participants. Whether that's a good thing or not is probably up for discussion. But, um, yeah, it was it was used uh, a couple of days ago by the Cabinet to have their uh, regular meetings. So that's kind of why it's uh, increased in prominence. There are lots of tools out there, whether it's uh, people that things that people have already heard of, like um, Skype. But Zoom is, is one that has, um, like many other services at the moment, Microsoft has done this as well as Google, has actually lowered its costs or, or made a number of its features free, and, uh, and, and Zoom is one of them. So it's, it basically just allows many people to contribute to meetings, and that can be used in businesses to hold regular meetings, or it can allow for socialising in this time, be it things like pub quizzes or just general catch-ups, you know, having drinks with friends. So Zoom has definitely increased in, in prominence. Yeah, the I, well, I, I know that my husband is still running his business from home and IT business, and he's obviously familiar with all this stuff, so I can meet his clients with these things anyway, uh, and they're all doing that from home. But yeah, certainly my family on Sunday, organised by my sister, did a quiz, uh, a family quiz about the family. As I mentioned on the, uh, the other day, we learnt rather too much about each other. Uh, and uh, that we were all taking place to, uh, in different, lot of different homes, some in France, some in Britain, uh, 12 different people, and, and able to all hear each other, and it was incredible how well it worked. And I know lots of people are doing those virtual drinks, meeting a friend saying, right, I'll meet you at 6 o'clock, I'll bring my drink, you bring yours, and we'll have a chat as if we are in the pub. Um, and, and it's a really, really good way of people maintaining that contact. And it is different from sending a, a WhatsApp or a text message or an email, and it is different even just from FaceTiming, isn't it? It, it does just create a very different atmosphere. I think it's interesting because as a lot of people are learning during this this process that you know the first couple of days of working from home can feel almost like a snow day where it's it's, it's it can be um, you can reduce your commute time so it's a good thing but then you you very quickly start to miss the social element and I think as humans we really need that sort of first check in with our colleagues the te ten minutes um, the first ten minutes of the day which you'd usually get maybe on your commute or you might the security guard when you go into the office I think what's interesting for, for business and for people in general is that the genie's out of the bottle now in terms of how yeah. we work. And I think a lot of businesses are going to wise up to the fact that it is expensive to have office space. I mean, the, in the U.S., it's estimated that $12,000 per employee is spent on office space. And kind of the, the, this whole scenario has made it very clear that people can work from home. It can be a... Well, and a lot of people are saying that's what life's going to be like in the future. Do you know what? I, I think it's... I mean, businesses may want to do that, but I think people still, with social animals, people actually like, as much as I mode about the commute, like going in and having their work colleagues. I mean, I've got a 30-second commute instead of a 30-minute commute, and um, I'm, sure, I'm sure my office are loving having me at home but not there, but um, having to make a lot less tea, I imagine. Um, but, I, I, you know what, I, I like to have that human physical contact. I think a lot of people do. Yeah, I think the mistake that, that businesses make is using these these um, these features like Slack or Trello or Zoom or all of these software applications that are being dropped on them at the moment, and then their managers just expecting them to to be able to just use them and, and use them effectively, and that's really the mistake. It really it does depend on managers and teams working together and making sure that they're okay and that they're adapting to this new way of of working and it's that social element like you say just checking in with your colleagues and making sure yeah. that they're feeling okay and that they are working effectively and that it's not just achieving the task in hand that it's also how they're feeling what are you doing yeah what keeping you, yeah keep, keeping the team together absolutely guy cocker lovely to speak to you tech expert guy cocker there let's uh, talk about